So last time we started class with these three figures, right? That's all that was up there, and they all started noticing things, notice things like that's red and that's blue and that's black, so the color is good on. We notice things like this figure sits, fits inside this figure, and likewise this one inside that one, right? That's pretty cool. Uh, but maybe the most useful piece of information that we discovered was that each figure has eight more squares than the figure before, right? Pretty useful, pretty important. If I want to figure out how many squares are in the fifth or the seventh or the 73rd figure, probably pretty important that I know that kind of a pattern, right? Like a, well, some kind of a pattern. Noticing patterns is going to make it easier, more possible for me to figure out how many squares are in 73. Would you agree that's an important piece of information? Yeah. Okay, okay. great. Thank you. You guys are, are engaging. I appreciate that. Let me actually show you. Uh, I mean, we might be able to look at the numbers and say, okay, 4 plus 8 is 12, 12 plus 8 is 20. Yeah, that pattern holds. But I don't know if you if you might have imagined it this way. So I just wanted to share this with you. That's what I was saying. Okay. So this is, uh, you know, it's a picture of the observation that some of you made. One fits inside the other. Okay, but it's... I think, Brandon, what you were saying is that like you have to take into account all of these, including these ones, and that's not the case. But you put, so, but the, I was saying they all connect, all up to 70, whatever it was, 73. 73. Right. They all have to, like, each one fits inside the other one and tell you to 73. They do do that. That's what I was trying to say. But if I look at, say, figure, what is this, one, two, three, four, Figure four, the only part of figure four that matters is the orange. It doesn't matter all this stuff inside. Right. Okay. I wasn't sure where we were on that. But here's what I want to show you. If I take figure one here. Why did it move so strangely? Take figure one and move it up and put it on top of figure two. What do you see? Blank space. Okay, blank space. <laughs> well, it fits there too, on the top. What's that? It fits on the top of. It would fit on the top of that one. And all of them. Okay, it fits on the top of all of them. Some of you made that observation. All of them have a one and then a three. Mm -hmm. That's true. Which is one and three is what figure one looks like. You notice anything else about it? when I cover part of figure two with figure one? Now look at me. I don't have the answer on the face. It's on the board. Three, four. If you notice anything about when I cover up part of figure two with figure one? Loses four. What's four? Loses four. Loses four, four. Oh, it loses four. Okay, so it loses four. That's part of, I mean, that's closely related to what I'm trying to get you to see. Sit. There's four squares on each side. There's four squares here and here, also here and there. Four there. Four there. How many is that? Eight. Is that important, do you think? What do you see? Figure one. And how many more? Eight more. Plus eight? Yeah. Let's take figure two and cover up part of figure three with that. And that will look like figure three. And there's eight more. There's eight more. Figure two plus eight more is exactly what figure three is. Figure three on top of figure oh. four. Right. Can you see? Yeah? Every time you put it all on, there's four blocks on the bottom of every one. Four? Like eight. eight. Four on either eight. side. Yeah. So a total yeah. of eight. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're seeing with our eyes the pattern that we noticed that was maybe just by the numbers. Maybe we just saw like, oh, four to 12 is eight, and 12 to 20 is eight. But we can see like how we could actually build the next figure using the previous figure. Right? I can put two here and here, two there and there. There's the eight. I can see the eight that I would add on. And if I, if I keep doing that, I can see eight more there. This blue figure plus eight more gives me three. So all I'm showing you there is something that you notice, the pattern of adding eight every time, but there is a picture of the adding the eight, four over here and four over there. There's, there's the eight. Does that make sense?
make sense? Mm-hmm. Just so like it visual. equalizes each side. Yeah, so we gotta like build the legs off of one figure to make the next figure. Alright. Alright, so then we found figure five had 36. Someone walk me through that. How they are really confident that figure five has 36 in it. Marcus? Oh, um, so eight. Eight times five is forty. Is this how you did it the very first time? Oh no, yeah. So what did you do? To, to, you started at figure three. 20, so figure four was twenty-eight because you add plus. eight to get to figure four. And then, and then you add eight again, and then you get thirty-six. Add eight again, and you get thirty-six. Okay. Does everybody agree that that is a reliable way to get from figure three to figure five? Yeah. yeah. yeah at eight, at eight again. Because it's it's like two jumps of eight to get from figure three to figure seven, right? Or do we have to add eight and then add another eight? No. We have to do it. Could we like add all at once? No. Yeah. How much? Sixteen. Right. So. We can add eight, then we can add eight more, or we can just add all the ones, add 16, and get all the way over there, okay? So what if I wanted to get from figure three, figure three, to figure 11? How much would I have to add on to the 20 squares eight. to get to 11, to figure 11? How much would you have to add on? Uh, you would do eight times eight. Okay, so the, the number of figures is eight figures, right? So it, it takes eight jumps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight jumps of eight to get all the way up to figure 11. Well, eight jumps of eight is just the same as jumping one jump of 64. 64. Eight times eight is 64. Okay. We all trust that? Like, we, I mean, it's kind of a big number. I, we could just add eight and eight to get to figure five, that wouldn't be too big a deal, but I'm, I'm not sure that we want to add eight and then add eight and add eight and add eight. Eight times to get to 11. So does everybody agree, does everybody believe that adding 64 is the same thing? Yeah. yeah. No one can agree on that. Okay. Okay, so we've got this uh, 580 versus 584 debate going, I think, for the most part. Okay. What's that? 584. Well, let's let's try and settle it once and for all. Okay, jumping from figure three to figure eleven takes eight jumps. Jumping from figure three to figure seventy-three takes how many jumps? Seventy jumps. Right. Three. Go seventy more. We're seventy-three. So seventy jumps. So how does that help us? How are we going to figure out how many? All right, figure 72. Uh, uh, seventy times eight. What do you think? Imagine you agree with seventy times eight. Yeah. Seventy times eight. To get from three, to get from three, we would add on seventy eight. Right? We would add on eight seventy times. Some, someone explain what I'm saying. Oh my bad. I was trying to calculate how many to turn on. Wow. Somebody explain what I'm saying about 70 jumps of eight going That's up not right. eight 70 times. Eight jump it go eight and then another eight and another eight. They go eight 70 times. Uh, Why 70 times? Just for a quick recap. So we, you're going to 73 figure and you're starting that figure. Yeah. Right? Everybody agree? Yeah. Going from three to 70. Take 70 jumps. Every jump is worth how much? Eight. 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 Seventy-eight. Seventy times eight. Five, six. Five, six. Uh, five, sixty. This is five, sixty? Yep. Well, how many squares are in figure three? It's five, sixty. It's five, sixty-five. So, what's that, five, sixty? Yeah, no, five, I don't know why I wrote an eight. Nobody said five, sixty-eight. Five, sixty. And five, sixty. <laughs> so that's how many we add on. How many did we start with? Yeah. Twenty. Five, twenty, eight. so it's twenty. Everybody agree we started at 20? Yeah. yeah. Everybody agree we add on 78? Yeah. 
Okay, so we have at, we're going to add 560. So what do we have? 580. You got that five Boom. 580. What do you think? Wait, then why is it, why is it five? How did you get 584? How did, how did some people get 584? Like what calculation because is 584? Yeah. 73 Ooh. times 8. Oh. And now, that'd be subtracted by 4. Okay. So here's what I want to discuss, because I heard people saying so let's subtract 4. I never heard like a really good reason for why we subtract 4. Why would we subtract, like if I want to say 73rd figure is 73 times 8, but then I subtract 4, why would you say? Because figure 1 starts out with 4. Because figure 1 has 4 squares in it. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, that's where it starts out with 4. Could oh. that be a coincidence? That we subtract 4 and figure 1 happens to have 4 blocks in it? Could that be a coincidence? Could it be a coincidence? It could, but... You don't think it is? No. Okay. No. I want you to think about this for a second. The, num the number that we jump up by is 8. <laughs> and the number that, the fig that figure 1 has in it is 4. It just so happens that the difference between 8 and 4 is 4. Right? No. I think therein lies our coincidence. No. Well, that's it? Well, that's how people got 584. Oh. But we now, are we convinced that it's not 584, that it is indeed 580? It's 580. Yeah, yeah. For sure, it, 580. Is, it is 580. Because okay, now, there's also another ridiculous If, here's what I think is happening with the minus 4. Uh, I think, well, actually, this brings up this thing here. Marcus. <laughs> yeah, Marcus, uh, what is this thing called? The, B pass. B pass. B pass. Okay. Because Marcus said something really great. He heard people saying 73. So what does Marcus do with it? They take it to Reba? Oh. Is that right? They take it to the launch ladies and then he gets right in the line. Do you guys go to the front of the line? Did you sign it though? I wrote my name. You gotta write his name and then you gotta write your name. Why did it? No, you did. I'll sign it. Make it official. I don't know how this works exactly. Run of the line for you. Okay. And this is why. Because as I was walking around, uh, Marcus did not come to class with the answer. Because Marcus was trying to like put together things that he heard, like ideas that he heard, and try to put it together with things. And it's like, this just doesn't work. Like, it doesn't work for what I know. So I don't think that it's going to work for like these bigger figures, and I, I think maybe, I don't know why people have subtracted before, so I'm not just gonna buy into it, okay? And this is what Marcus said. Well, maybe, maybe I don't know if you remember or not, but you said, well, I don't think 73 times eight works because, why did you say you don't think 73 times eight works? Um, because if you multiply eight times three, bigger three, it doesn't equal 20. Okay. It's 24, so. Now somebody else might have done that, and. <laughs> Whatever. Like sometimes you do something that's the same, you know, I don't hear it. But when I was walking around, Marcus didn't pretend like he had the answer. He didn't jump on bandwagon with anybody else. He was like, I just, I don't think that that's right. And I don't want to just subtract four because, hey, I know that I'm supposed to. So what's going on here? So what, let, me, let me show you what Marcus was saying. He didn't think 73 times 8 was enough because, this means because, like, uh, no, not, that's not quite right, because if it was right, then I should be able to take 3 times 8 and get figure 3. If 73 times 8 gives me figure 73, that work for all of them? Yeah. Yeah. it should. It should work for all of them, but does it? 3 times 8, what is that? 21. Okay, but here's the thing. You might notice, like, let's do figure 1, 8 times 8, or sorry, 1 times 8, is eight? Oh. I'll pay attention, please. One times eight is eight, but that's not how many squares this has. It has four. So I'll subtract four. Let's see if that works. Two times eight is 16, but I know this figure has 12. So hey, that's four less than what I just got. So I see minus four is a pattern that's working. Let me, when we tried it for figure three, we came out with four too many. I could do it for a couple more, right? I could do it for figure five, which we're pretty certain has 36. Right? Five times eight is 40. That's four too many, right? Minus four is working. And then 
I think that's when you come up, then, then, then people are starting to say, well, why do I subtract four? What's going on with that? Oh, well, look, there's four in figure one, so that's why I subtract four. No. <laughs> you would not subtract four just because that's how many are in the first figure. So, <laughs> minus four works. Can't deny it. It does work. But, it's not a very efficient one. Not sure. No, it's, it's, it's all right. Pretty efficient. Pretty, pretty efficient. But, you know, there's not, like, all you know so far is I just told you that's, you don't subtract four just because there's four in the first figure. There's another reason why you would subtract four. Uh, let's think about it this way. Let's think about it this way. Okay. Let's think about 73 times eight. Okay. Actually, let's let's think about. Uh, let's say it this way. People are kind of concentrating on trying to get sort of in a way like trying to get from figure one all the way to whatever figure you want. Does that seem right? Like, except why would I start with figure three or figure five? Let's just start at the beginning and figure out a way to get wherever I want to go. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Seems like people are concentrating on that, and I think it's a good thing to do. I want to be able to just, instead of starting at figure three and figuring all that out, let's just say I know which figure I want to go to. Let me plug that number into something and have it tell me how many squares there are in that figure, right? So well, let's investigate 73 times eight. You got something to say about 73 times 8? No, just with the problem itself. Like this one. You're going to derail our <coughs> No. OK. So with the uh, subtracting 4, wouldn't that just be like a little easier shortcut to take than to do the whole problem itself? Well, if you knew why you were subtracting 4, I'd say yes. You know. You're, you're theorizing. I like that you're theorizing. It's better than just saying, like, I minus 4, and I have no idea why, and I don't care. You're saying it, you think it's because of this, and I'm telling you, well, in a roundabout way, it kind of is, but you can't just say four, so subtract four. Yeah. So uh, let's let's take a look. Okay. Take a look at why 73 times eight is just kind of not quite it for really important. Okay. Let's try going from figure uh, one to figure three. Okay. From figure one to figure three. So I'm trying to figure out figure three. How many times do I go up by eight? to get to figure three. Twice. Not three times, only twice. Uh -huh. Not three times, twice. How many times would I go up by eight to get up to figure five? To get from figure one four. to figure five, four. to get four. to figure five, four, four times. So we go up by eight, four times. Is this making sense or am I saying? Yes, because it's always How gonna much? be one behind the number that you're already One at. behind the number of the figure you're going to. Yeah. Okay, because we're already on one to get to five. We only have to go up four times. So, Hunter, where do you think I'm okay. going? Wait, so we're trying to figure out why you subtract four, right? Not yet. I don't want to, I have a theory about why you subtract four. Okay, Let, let's, let's keep on this track, and then we can look at that. Okay. Uh, so, to get from figure one to figure five, we go up how many times? Four. Four, four times. So I would go up four times eight, right? <laughs> Well, let's see. If I just do four times eight, because right, if I'm trying to figure five, if I'm figure five, four times eight, that gives me like how many blocks to add on. But what is four times eight? 32. 32. Is that enough? No more. Why do we add four? If I just do four times eight, say I start at figure one, and I just do four times eight, it's kind of like I'm assuming the first figure has how many squares in it? Four. four. Just four times eight? No, eight. So starting at figure one, and I add on four times eight. You add the first four, take the other first. You add figure one to the eight, you start off. Okay, so that adding the four, yes, we do. We would add on four because there are four that we start with, right? So four times eight, that just tells me how many to add on. Just like it's like this five sixteen, right? It, 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 
It's 506, there's 560 more blocks in 73, figure 73, than in figure 3. But then I'm kind of forgetting about how many blocks are in figure 3. How many blocks are in figure 3? How many? 20. 20. So we have to add those 20 onto the 560 to get our 580. Right? Because this times 8 number is just telling me how many to add on. But what do I add it on to? I add it on to whatever figure I started at. Well, if I start at figure 1, and I do four times eight. That just tells me that from here to figure five, there's 32 more blocks. 32 more blocks than how many blocks? How many blocks did we start with? Four. So we got to add on that first figure. Okay. I would say by far why we add four is easier to understand, easier to explain than why we would subtract four. Oh, okay. But as Jaden said, the four, right? To yeah. get to figure five, well, that's just one behind the number like, of the figures you want to get to. Yeah. Figure five, so let's use four, because it's just four jumps to get to figure five, okay. times eight, plus the four, why plus four? Because there's four that you started off with. Four started off with four, you got to add those on to whatever we're going to add on to it. Okay? I'm sure now you're going to have a conversation one-on-one -on -one about minus four. Okay? One-on-one. -on -one. Uh, I wanted to show you one thing. We're going to go on to another. We're going to use what we've learned. We're going to use these approaches, see if we can take a new pattern and find our way just like super fast. Just see how quickly we can find our way to what I'm asking. Oh. Now, this, okay. is this a new pattern? Yeah. Yeah. No. no. Yeah. What is it? Oh, it's just or three dimensional. Yeah, it's like three dimensional, the pattern we just were looking at. Here's figure one, four blocks. Figure two, 12 blocks. Can you see figure one, figure two, figure three, figure four? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Getting inside of each other. If I were to go back a slide, it would be like, we're looking right at the front of this thing. So, this is a sculpture in Washington, D.C. called the Four-Sided Pyramid. I don't know. It's a nice example. It's get used in, in quite a few textbooks of an example of this kind of a pattern. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you another another pattern, and I want to. I'm just going to ask you how many are in figure number whatever. Okay, so you make a little game out of it. I want you to do it individually. I want you to do it quietly. I want you to give everybody else around you the opportunity to figure it out for themselves. Okay? I don't want you to say anything. I don't want you to say, oh, it does this. Oh, here's the pattern. Oh, here's the answer. Just let everybody try for themselves. Right? So I'm going to give you figure, three figures here. Figure one, figure two, figure three. Lego. Those are Legos. And the thing we're going to be counting up is like all the, the individual circles. Okay? I know these aren't all one by one Legos. So this has, how, how many are in figure one? Seven. 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 That's right. So figure one has. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. ten, right? Now, I want you to build this up yourself. You've had a lot of experience with the previous pattern. I want you to figure out quietly, individually, how many are in figure, let's say figure six. Okay? Individually, quietly, for yourself, figure out how many are in figure six. Figure two has how many? Okay, so we can follow this pattern of what's the pattern? Three. 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 Adding three. Okay, we can see it in the numbers, right? The numbers are is pretty clear. The difference between each next number is the, the next number, the previous number is three. Uh, can someone show us where the three could be added on? Where it looks like Someone would put three more of those one by one Legos? Up there, like up there. On the diagonal? Yeah. And then on the, on the top, like on the, and on the ends. And on the ends. Yes. Yeah. Right. So putting it? three there would give you the next figure. Putting three in the, in the diagonal and up and to the right would give you the next figure. Okay, so now we can see where those three could go. Okay. So if we just follow this pattern, three, 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 what does figure six give us? 22. 22. 22. Now, who, let's kind of take a, a survey. Hey, 
a single survey. Who did that? Who went up by three and up by three and up by three again? Me. Okay. A lot of you. That works. Why you can explain why you're doing it, but it works. Mike is to be able to explain why, but maybe we can take something that someone did and everybody can work on explaining why it works. But we can do so we can do that. Do we want to do that forever? <coughs> <coughs> the hundreds figure or whatever. We don't want to do that forever. Okay. How can we? I mean, how can we make a bigger jump just all at once? Just jump from thirteen to figure six. You could sit. Oh, so you did five times three. Why did you do five times three? Okay, why, why is it 6 minus 1? I don't know, it's like quite a bit. Does anybody want to take Sid's explanation from there? Why would you do 6 minus 1? She's trying to find the 6th figure, why would you do 6 minus 1? So you're saying to get from figure 1 to figure 6. Okay, so six is five ahead of one. If we start at one, which it kind of sounds like Sid is doing, we would only have to go up five, because we're trying to get to figure number six. We're already on figure number one, so we only need to go up five times, right? So she did six minus one. To use uh, Jaden's words, because it's one behind the figure number, right? Times what? Times three. Okay, so that's five times three. 15. 15, is that right? How many did she say it was in figure 6? 22. 22. So this is 15. How, we should get 22, though, right? That's it? Then you have to take 15 plus 7. Why plus 7? Because, um, it's, 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 okay, so there's 7 blocks, so you have to... The first one. Yeah, this... This, this 5 times 3 only counts like how many blocks we would have to add on to the first one to get the sixth one. Okay. We'd have to add on 3, and 3, and 3, and 3, and 3, and right, 5 threes. So we started with, started with 7. So we add on 15 to the 7 we started with, gets us to how many are in 6. The sixth figure. Does that make sense? Yeah. No? I think so. I don't know why you you don't know where you add what? Because you said you couldn't subtract four. Well, I didn't say you couldn't. I just said nobody seemed to understand exactly why. Oh. You understand why we add seven? Okay. I mean, if it works, it works. Notice this. See if this works. Six times three minus three. Sorry, minus uh, four. Sorry, minus four. No, no, no. What am I trying to say? Uh, no, not minus. It's plus four. Plus four. That's another way of doing it. Okay, let's try to put. Oh, just write some numbers down. It is nowhere near time to leave, and nowhere is never time for you to interrupt class that much. Figure one had seven blocks. Figure two had <coughs> ten blocks. Figure three had thirteen, 13 blocks. Okay, so what did you do, Marcus? If you don't know why it worked. Oh. So I so I multiplied figure so I multiplied three since it's um, a constant rate. Uh-huh. By two and then <laughs> and then added figure one and I got seven. Like three times two. 3 times 2 plus 7? No, plus 1. Plus just the number 1? Yeah. And then I got 7. And then 3 times 3 is 9. I kept on adding my figure 1 to it. And then got Just adding 1? Yeah. Plus 1, plus 1? Like, <coughs>
seven and then ten and then thirteen. So you're adding three, not one. No, I was multiplying three times two. Uh -huh. Plus one. That equals seven. So. Okay. So figure one. Three times two plus one. Seven. That gives you seven. And then yeah. you did three oh. times three is nine plus one. Yeah. So I think we won't get into that too much. I mean that we could we could have that make sense, but I think it might like you and I like Hunter and I had a discussion about the minus four, like that discussion about that. But what I want to help everybody see is like something we can all get on board with. And that is if I start at the first figure, how much do I have to go by to get to the second figure? Three. Three. Okay, well, no, that makes sense. I mean, to get the figure number, I would add uh, one, that's like one jump, right? And I would add on three. To get from figure one to figure three, we would add on two to get the figure number, right? That's two jumps. That's two jumps of three. So that would mean I'd add on how much? And that is two jumps, right? One, two, so I got on two times three, which is six. So the number that I multiply the change by, the change being three, right? <coughs> three, three, three. <coughs> change by every time. Steady change rate. Steady change rate, yeah, rate of change. That's, what we, that's exactly what we're talking about here. It's steady, it's constant. It's always the same between each figure. We could draw some figures up here that that wouldn't be true. It wouldn't just go up by three, it could go up by three, and then it could go up by six, then it could go up by 12, why not? That, that could be a valid pattern. But these ones happen to be steady, constant, the same every time. Between one figure and the next, always. For this one, three. For the other one, it was eight. For other ones, it'll be a different number. Yeah. Okay. So if I want to go from one, let's do a different one, to 18. The one to 18. How many, how many steps is that from one to 18? 17 steps. Not 18 steps. I'm already at one. See right up here, Kelly. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out this number. Well, if I go up 17 <coughs> steps, if you go up by three, how many times? Go up by three. How many times am I going to go up by three to get to 18? 51. 17 times? 51, right? So I sweep down three times. Yeah, three times out of genius 51. So it would go up 17 steps of three, and well, that's 51. So I go up 51 from here, but I start at the seven. So it's how many? How many are here? 58. So go from figure one to figure seven, from figure 18, I would have to go up by three 17 times. That's 51 more, 51 more than seven that I started with, 58. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Constant rate of change is a really important concept. We're gonna expand this out in the days to come. Okay, we're doing really well with this. I have uh, the work.